do you work hard? So first and foremost, to get to the point of this video, so you can decide if you want to watch further, uh, this is a video about clarifying the definition, if there is one, or at least your definition of work or working hard, if we want to put those two things together, um, and really give you the idea that anyone that wants to be the best bodybuilder they want to be, whether competitive or just wants to have the best physique that you can have, will probably need to take time. Uh, the more time I think to actually sit around and analyze, um, hopefully with some self-awareness, what are the things that you're doing on a daily basis? Uh, the more times you can do that, the more often you can really do it, you know, trying to take your own biases out of the equation, the better off you're gonna be. Uh, because the reality is people have this definition of what hard work is they create when they start bodybuilding. Um, and they have this definition of what hard work is based off of other bodybuilders and what other bodybuilders are doing. Um, and we really have very specific things that we glorify as work in the bodybuilding world. But I would argue um, that one, as you want to continue developing your physique, you're going to constantly need to reevaluate what work is, um, what you focus on. Um, you're going to constantly need to take a step back and realize that we don't have this shit all figured out. Um, and everybody gets in their worlds and their groups and we tend to focus on and glorify uh, very specific types of work. So you need to not just take a step back from yourself, but take a step back from what current and modern bodybuilding is, um, at least the parts that we really seem to focus on. Um, and again, redefine what work is. Um, and again, just if you think I'm a little out there on this one or whatever, just stick with me. I say the kind of evidence for it is if someone had a lot of free time on their hands, I think it would be very interesting if someone compiled, and again, keep in mind, this is where we have it on video, uh, excluding where we have it on in writing, excluding where people have said it not on video, but put in video where a bodybuilder has claimed to have worked harder than any other bodybuilder this season coming into the show, saying that no one could have possibly worked harder than they worked. Um, and so again, it's fine if somebody, I mean, it's not my, it doesn't matter what my opinion of fine is anyway, but I understand where someone's coming from if they said they worked as hard as they could uh, and realize that one, that's still up to their own perception. With their perception of what they did and, and what they really did are two completely different things. Um, but for someone to say they actually outworked every other competitor <laughs> is just amazing to me. I mean, that speaks a lot for the ego of some people um, and it speaks a lot for the delusion of some people where one, you don't know what people did. You know, you don't know how painful something was for somebody. You don't know how painful a set was for somebody. You don't know how much someone was starving or dealing with discomfort, or who knows what are delaying gratification for something. Um, so one, it's an idiotic statement because no one knows what everyone else is doing. We don't know how internally hard something actually is. If best, we have a little bit of an external view. Um, but then two, there are so many variables that should define work, especially in the bodybuilding world, that there's not a person on the planet, even if you weren't one of the people involved in that statement, that could really quantify or qualify who actually worked hardest coming into the show? Who was the hardest working bodybuilder of all time? Um, and so hopefully I'm going to get somewhere with this now, but maybe give you some stuff to think about along the way. I really started this conversation by uh, talking with my good friend Jordan Peters, who, if you don't know, is that amazing coach with a sweeter accent than I have that is way more muscular than I am. Um, and his androgens on any given day are much more manly than mine. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Jordan is awesome. I mean, I think he's a great coach. I think he's got a great thought process. If you can't be, take some motivation, hate to use the word, but motivation, inspiration, you get the idea of watching the way he approaches things, the way that he trains. It's awesome. I mean, it's so funny when a lot of people focus on how do I get here? How do I get there? How do I get this big? Jordan has a very brilliant way of saying, because he means it truthfully because of the amount of people we work with, the information that you need is not difficult. The application of very simple information over and over and over and over and over tediously forever is the hard part. So again, clarify, information part's easy, application part is tough. And that really is bodybuilding to a certain extent. And Jordan is definitely rightfully so known as a hardworking bodybuilder because again, with all the variables you can see, and he puts a lot out there more than some people, I mean, he's, he's working hard. But we were having a conversation about um, he's kind of working his way through some injuries and his split and this and that. Um, and because of the rarity of how hard Jordan works is, if we're just talking work in the gym, I think bodybuilders focus on that as the only type or the most important type of work. Um, I can't say that it's the most important. Maybe it is. It's definitely one of the most important. 
Um, it's a massively important variable. It will absolutely separate a huge amount of people um, from people that can take their physique as far as possible and people that can't. But it was kind of a reminder talking to him and just kind of getting some thoughts out loud between the two of us that that's not the only type of hard work. And the reason is I would say that is one of the biggest dividers. So let's make up a number and say 95% of people won't ever go to places in the gym that they need to go to take their physique as far as possible. And for a lot of people, uh, it's it can be the icing on the cake. It can be to bust through plateaus. It could be the mean the difference of still actually consistently making progress, you know, after their first 10 years of training where a lot of people stop. Um, so again, it can have a very big cumulative effect. It can one bump you right to that next level or keep you making progress when most people stall. So because it is such a massive variable um, and a massive piece of that work equation, sometimes we forget it's not the only thing because we basically just put in camp. So here's that 5% willing to do the things that those people aren't working to do, willing to do, and there's everybody else that's not even gonna go that place ever. And so we say, well, if you're in that 5%, you're working as hard as you can work. And the reality is when you have mental problems like Jordan has and like I have um, and like a lot of people have, it's not that 5% can be a lot of people when you consider how many people train. A lot of people actually like hurting themselves in the gym, like the the good hurt, hopefully, but we'll carry over obviously to bad hurt sometimes. But a lot of people like training really, really hard. A lot of people like having beautiful sets at uh, you know PR weight where the last rep looked exactly like the first rep, where it's just inching along. It feels like it takes 10 seconds. The whole way through, you're basically having your life flash before your eyes. You're questioning pretty much all your life decisions up to this point of why do you enjoy doing this so much? Parts of you want to bail out the entire rep, um, and at the same time, you're perceiving the largest amount of you know localized pain because it's basically we're talking about leg day. I can't have any of this stuff I'm talking about another day, but localized pain, global pain. You feel like you're going to pass out, maybe throw up, maybe shit your pants, maybe you've done small amounts of all three, um, and then you take it a rep past that rep. So there's people that enjoy that. Um, but the problem with that too is you, you do, you start to glorify and enjoy that. And while not, I think, in, required in the purest definition of work, I don't think anywhere in the definition does it say anything about enjoyment or not enjoying it. It basically just says things you need to do to get a job or a task done. And it doesn't really talk about any emotion in it. And so what ends up happening is people like doing that really, you know, gonna die on a set far as you can take it, you know, take you know, a, maybe an hour to mentally and physically recover, uh, you know, kind of clean your pants and get new underwear on. Um, and then, you know, can take a week till you're ready to actually do that again. <laughs> um, people like that. But that's not the end of work, and especially in bodybuilding. And what people might not like might be tedious. It might be boring. There's going to be nothing glorious about it. You sure as hell can't post it on Instagram and expect to get a lot of likes. You know, if you're ridiculously strong, you can post PR sets with PR form. And again, I'm going to like it as much as the next guy because that's fucking awesome. But are you going to go home and show me when you're eating the exact same foods every single meal, or you're doing things that you don't want to do. So really where this stem with Jordan is basically for him, he, he can work hard uh, and, and he can work hard in that 5% that will separate him from most people. Um, but he honestly doesn't enjoy <laughs> doing shit that's not that type of hard work, which again, those things he doesn't enjoy are the actual hard work he needs to do to progress his physique. And so specific to him, we were talking about doing a split that's just boring as hell. <laughs> Maybe doing some exercises he doesn't like as much as other exercises, uh, training things a way that he doesn't like to train him, manipulating things the way he doesn't like manipulating them. But again, for the task at hand for him, which the goal is to be a pro bodybuilder, he might have to do some shit. This isn't reality, half reality, half joke. But the joke is if uh, JP could recover from it, he'd probably deadlift every session. Some variation, maybe conventional because that's fun, maybe RDL because that's better for hypertrophy. Maybe something else that's just stupid. He can hold a lot of weights, just enough that he can hold at the top before his arms rip off. So when he's done bodybuilding, maybe he can go ahead and program deadlift seven days a week. Um, but to be a professional bodybuilder, that might not necessarily need to be the things that he needs to do. He might to have to do uh, programming that's a lot more boring, exercises that he doesn't like, do things frequently, and then probably just do some shit that you don't want to film, that you don't want to have to do. Uh, you don't want to have to put on Instagram because nobody's going to give a shit about it. Uh, and again, especially the people that have this outside perception of what bodybuilding is, they won't see the value of it. So that's one example to Jordan. But I urge everyone to constantly take time and look at what makes up bodybuilding or what makes up taking your physique to the highest level. 
and look at the stuff that you have turned into your most enjoyable part of work. So there's a million examples of this. Everybody likes training hard in the gym. Nobody likes uh, eating boring food over and over and over. A couple of people have talked about, you look at the examples of the diets that, um, who just posted them? James just posted, um, Hollingshead uh, and Dusty, Dusty Hanshaw. Look at their diets. Um, they're boring as fuck. There's nothing exciting about them. They posted it. And anyone, this is the thing, you get all these nerds online that read all this neat shit and they learn about, oh, well, I can do this and I can cycle this and I can backload this and I can do this and I could fast on this day and all that. And again, if you know how to adhere to things, if you're fine doing the things you have to do with a diet, those things might have a place and they might be okay. But there will be someone that looks at that diet and say, well, there's nothing magical about that. That's boring as hell. But that same person is unwilling to adhere to the same diet every single day. The same person might want to train hard but they don't want to eat the same food over and over. And they specifically don't want to eat the last 2,000 calories of the day that they have to eat where they feel like they're going to barf or they're going to throw up. Or even more tedious, everybody likes to do the exercises they like to do. Nobody likes to say, hey, you're injured. You have to do this exercise for a while. Or, hey, you have to work around this thing for a while. Or even worse, I've seen so many bodybuilders that are happy to go and you know once, twice, three times a week, have someone just jam an elbow or a metal rod into their body and say that they're doing the corrective work, I'm doing all that. Um, I've said this before, with rare exception, 90, 90 95% of that, uh, again, made up statistic, but a large percentage of that stuff is completely useless. Um, it will not change your physique. Uh, if anything, some of it will put a temporary Band-Aid feel, maybe a decrease in the perception of pain. But if you actually look at what causes injuries, um, fixing it takes some work. So again, it might require changing your form. It might require changing your favorite exercise. It might require really tedious, boring shit that you have to do three, four, five times a week that might involve your body weight. It might involve going into positions that feel horrible and uncomfortable. Um, and you feel like the perceived level of effort looks like you're deadlifting 800 pounds, but you're holding up your arm in a goofy position. And I've seen so many hard workers um, that have been assigned... <laughs> Sometimes by me, things that I say, hey, do this before your workout, do this after your workout, do this four times a day. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, adherence is not always fantastic. <laughs> Where again, they'd much rather just pick up 800 pounds in the gym uh, and then have someone jam a bar into their back and take no ownership of the entire world that exists in between that, uh, which is again, is you having some awareness of your body, having some control over your body, taking your body through ranges that it possesses, making sure that you keep those ranges, expand ranges that you should have that you lost, et cetera. And that's just a couple of the examples. So there's things that go into um, recovery, that go into food, diets that aren't fun, diets that aren't sexy, diets you don't want to adhere to, everything else with recovery, sleep. Everybody loves to talk about how their team knows sleep. Um, they'll have their story about how they only got four hours of sleep the night before. They still got in both their cardio sessions and still had two weight sessions. I'm like, well, congratulations, you're a fucking dumb dumb. Uh, and again, in reality, for very short periods of time, you might have to get shit done. So again, if you're the last four weeks of a contest, realistically, you might not be able to fix your sleep at that point in time. Um, but any you know, twelve year old that just picks up a magazine realizes that bodybuilding is about stimulus in the gym. And everything else is recovery. And if you are the four-hour sleep person, then basically you just don't give two shits about recovery. Um, again, there's you can't outwork out awesome half the amount of sleep that you should get. And then some people will say, oh, well, you know, I just can't sleep. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, what have you tried? Oh, I tried this. I tried that. And that's the end of your hard work. Um, I can't figure it out. I tried melatonin. I tried the sleeping thing. Okay, well, that's just like throwing something random at a wall if you realize what goes into actually having proper sleep. What amount of money and time have you invested in seeking out a professional that fixes sleep, you know, that maybe gives you a long questionnaire, fi figures out what sleep cycle is messed up or your ability to get into the sleep cycle or your ability to calm down to even be ready to fall asleep. Um, so again, if you break down the things from, you know, what I'll call it prehab, working and controlling your own body, uh, working on around injuries, keeping yourself injury prevention, maybe having a structured strategic workout, putting time and effort into your diet, doing tedious, boring shit every single day for months and months on end, um, you know, taking ownership of your sleep, doing boring shit. Like who doesn't want to watch TV? You know, if you didn't watch TV before you went to sleep, you'd probably fall asleep better. Don't, don't look at your screen, put time and effort and money into that boring shit. Um, so again, take time, take effort. I think it should be done on a daily, monthly, weekly basis, whatever. Uh, the more important your physique is, the more you should do it to take time to redefine what hard work, hard work is to you. 
and make sure you're really addressing the work that you need to do to take the physique, your physique to the next level, not just the work that you enjoy to do.